Hi there, my name is Sophia Hernandez, and today we are speaking to a very, very special guest who has helped so many reach that version of their healthier, stronger selves. Today in the spotlight is Elise Valdez. <laughs> Good. First, for those who don't know you, um, can you tell them a little bit about yourself? Yes, I'm Elise Valdez. I'm founder of The Ventures. I'm a certified personal trainer, so I help women live a healthy and happy lifestyle. And that's basically it. So tell me a little bit, what was your journey like to becoming a, a PT? You know, what kind of made you want to go that route? What inspired you? Or did you kind of always know that that was something that you wanted to do? So I actually didn't know that that was what I wanted to do in the end. So I've always been pretty active. I lived a super active lifestyle growing up. I was surrounded by cousins who we grew up in the in the Keys, you know, where the Florida Keys is. It was awesome. So we were always either paddle boarding or tubing and we were always playing sports. Sports has always been a super big part of my life also. So I pole vaulted in track. I did short distance running, I cheered. I think I pretty much did almost every single sport when I was little growing up, but cheerleading and track were the ones that I really stuck with. And I did them for about like 10 years. So big bulk of me growing up. And so I really just have always been kind of in that like fitness, not industry, but the, the athletic world. So I really, really had a passion for moving my body and for being outdoors. So I think that this led me to, my mom brought me to her boot camp when I was about like 14 years old. And then that was when I was like introduced to like the fitness side of it, to the gym, to um, a high intensity workout, to boxing, to a little bit of all of that. And I was like, that was a whole different world for me, even though it was similar to the one that I was previously in. So I was like, wow, like I didn't know that I can keep going with this and, and potentially make it my career. And so when I knew that it was my passion, I was like, let's, let's do it. Um, of course, it took me a little bit of time to realize like, this is really what I want to do. So when I was in FIU, I, I went to FIU, I got my bachelor's there. But my freshman year, just like most girls, I feel like freshman year, you're really just trying to figure it out. And like, what really do I want to do? You know, like figuring out your passion and figuring out what you want to do for the rest of your life, because I've heard that you should do something that you love. That whole year was me just figuring it out. And I just one day had like a moment where I'm like, you know what, this is what I truly love. Like I really can't picture myself doing anything else. And if there's a way for me to make it my career, like why not just go for it? So that same day, I called my cousin over, she came over and I like pitched her my idea. I'm like, I want to like start my own fitness brand. I don't even know if I sound crazy saying this out loud, but like, I'm just so passionate about it and I feel like my story can help so many girls out there. So I shared that with her and right away she was like, are you kidding me? She's a graphic designer. So she was like, I will help you. Like she started creating my Instagram, like uh, bubbles and like little things like that that helped me start my marketing. And right away we started the page and she from there just helped me continue to help me like grow, you know? Yeah. And there's a lot of things that I feel like I want to like deep dive into that. So the first question that I have is with PT, the training that goes into that, what was that kind of like for you in that process, being that you kind of did it later in the game maybe, and maybe not the, the traditional route that others do? So it was my junior of college where that's when I was like, I'm going for this. I'm going to get my a CPT as a certified personal trainer. So I'm going to get my license for it. So I decided to go with the NASM degree, which is National Academy of Sports Medicine. It's one of the best, it's very, very credible. So even though it's a little bit more expensive, I was like, since this is what I wanna do, I need to invest fully in, in it. So I went that route, I studied with my good friend, her name is Marcella, she also has an account, Fit and Foodie. And so we studied together and it was awesome just having someone to hold me accountable. We'd meet up at a coffee shop and we'd study for, we studied for about like six months into the exam. And then five, about five months, I would say. And then we took it together in December. So it's now been like a year and a half with, with that license. And it's been amazing. The first year I focused really on online, my online presence on growing my brands through social media, doing my live workouts through quarantine and kind of just getting that experience 
also it was it was quarantine, so I wasn't able to have that one-on-one -on -one connection. And I'm sure you'd want to dive more deep into how that was like. But recently, I was able to now. A couple months ago, I'm starting my home gym. I'm starting building that, so I've been able to open up my online. Uh, I mean, my in-person training. So I'm now training girls in person, one-on-one, -on -one and in small groups. Yeah. And for you, what has that been like as far as like finding your? Because I know different personal trainers maybe have different niches, right? Like they prefer one thing over another, or they say, you know, this is what I I strive in, and this is something that I I could work on. What has that process been like for you, kind of finding what works for you and what fit adventures with ease is kind of like? So I think what really differentiates me between, I would say, other trainers out there is just that I really focus on how you feel as a person. I I do I look at the holistic approach of your body, your mind, your soul. So when my girls come in, I'm always asking them, how are you feeling as a person? I'm also very, very into making it fun for my girls. I That's why I put... So that's why working out is such a big part of my life. It's because I truly, truly enjoy it. And I just wake up every day and I actually like get excited for my workouts. So I really just try to make it fun for them. When they come in, I every client is gonna be different. So depending on, of course, their goals, but also what they like to do. So if that client loves boxing, of course, I'm gonna be incorporating some boxing. I personally love high intensity training, which is HIT. So I love just getting my heart rate up and just feeling honestly like a badass when I train. I love getting, finishing that workout and being just drenched with sweat. And I like, love that feeling. That's like the best feeling. <laughs> <laughs> if I'm not drenched in sweat, I feel like I did not work out. But of course, there's some girls who like lower impact workouts. And of course, I will be um, happy to create those workouts for them. But me personally, as an athlete, I love going in there and hitting it extremely hard. So yeah, that's, I would say, just keeping it fun. I love mixing outdoors with indoors. So my, my gym right now is, I, I turned my garage into like my little gym, but I have like a whole outdoor court. So I love taking the girls outdoor, indoor, because if it was up to me, I'd be outdoor the entire time. So I think that that's really what separates me from other trainers out there. Yeah, and I love the outdoor too, and it is, it's totally, you know, preference, you know, whether that, the workout, what you prefer, where you prefer, how you like it, you know, um, for you, your relationship with working out, because I feel like the misconception for a lot of people is like, they might see you, right, and you are a strong girl, a toned girl, and you could do those push-ups, you know, like, <laughs> in like supersets, and they might think, oh my god, like, this girl's a badass, and I'm like, nowhere near there. What was your journey like for working out and maybe getting to the point where you're at now where it is fun and it is something that you look forward to and it's something that you probably couldn't foresee yourself not having in your day to day. But just like with anything, if you wanna be good at something, you need to practice it. So the spot that I'm at right now, I wasn't at this spot a year, two years ago. And that's what motivates me every day is just to be better than I was yesterday. And I think that's what propels me forward. So some things that helped me become a better version of myself is following girls who are better than me, who are stronger than me, smarter than me, and I learn from them. So through Instagram, through videos, I'm constantly reading and learning. And so for other girls, I encourage them to do the same, whether they either look up to me or someone else. You're, you should always find someone who just constantly wants you to be a better version of yourself and you just work at it every day. And the biggest thing also is just not comparing yourself to them, comparing yourself to yourself and your biggest competition should be you. So really I just, I get motivated by them, but I'm not comparing myself to them. So I look in the mirror and I'm like, okay, here's where I'm at, but I want to be here and how can I get there? And I just wake up and I work for it. So it's just not being so hard on yourself and knowing that your journey is going to be completely different than someone else's. Again, I was brought up in the athletic world. So I've always been, I hear a lot of girls tell me, oh, but you're so athletic, kind of what you just told me. And I'm like, yeah, I was always into sports. So the running and the this came a little bit easier for me. Doesn't mean that you can't get there. You just might need to work a little bit harder, but it's okay. We all have our different goals and you should never feel bad about being at the place where you're at. You should just want to, that should just excite you to want to work a little bit harder to get to wherever you want to be. So everyone just has different goals. And I think that that's so unique and cool. Yeah, and I think too, you touched upon an important topic. I always think that comes with working out, right? Is that comparative nature because it's almost like that 
the devil on your shoulder. Like you tell yourself, don't, you know, you're look, you're in the gym and you see this girl that has an amazing body and who's maybe at the level that you want to be at or whatever. And it looks different for different people. And it's a little devil on your shoulder that tells you, don't look at that girl, you know, focus on yourself and focus on your workout. But to get to that headspace of like, this is my journey. This is for me. And the results are mine. You know, how did that like advice for people who are looking to get there? And, and cause it's a day-to-day -day thing. I think when you, every time you put on your, your sneakers to go work out. Of course. I think that's something that we've all struggled with, even myself. I think that social media is a great outlet, but it could also be dangerous to your mental health. So it's important to limit the time that you're on there. Also just follow the people, like I said, that really inspire you instead of the girls that you look at and you're like, for some reason you don't feel good. And I'm sure you can relate to that. I don't know. I don't know the feeling, but it's just some girls you see that you can tell that their, their intentions are impure. So what I would say is just surround yourself with people who really just motivate you and who are going to tell you the truth and how it is like you're doing great or at least honestly like yeah you can work on this so it's just like surrounding yourself with genuine people and being just confident in who you are so as a person and this has been like a whole journey for me but focusing a lot on my mental health has really been able to boost my confidence as a woman and just doing you know my daily journals and um and daily affirmations and just telling myself like you are enough you are so smart you're so like you're killing it you're on your own journey i know that there's i could easily go into that comparative mind where i look at other girls on instagram and i'm like oh you know but they've been doing this for less time and they already have this many followers or whatever and i just bring myself back to it doesn't matter how many followers you have it matters really the impact that you're making and Hearing that from other girls when they tell me, it just reassures me that I'm on the right track and and everyone's just on their own journey. So you can't, you really can't just um, compare yourself with other girls. And that goes for Instagram, in person, your workouts, your body. I think that relates to almost everything because we tend to really compare ourselves to other girls. They're smarter than us, they're prettier than us and this, but really, just focus on, on yourself from within. And I think that that will in turn help you so much. Yeah, for sure. And I think you touched upon it earlier, you know, that you maybe take a more holistic approach. Um, it's not just about the working out and the getting strong, but it's about making your mind strong and in a good headspace. Why is that so important to you? Can you tell me a little bit kind of how you maybe help some of your clients kind of achieve that? Of course. I think that focusing on your mind just as much as your body is equally as important and so that's why I help my clients implement things in their life that are going to help them grow whether that's daily journaling going for a walk outdoors every person is different but I really encourage them to try, try different things and see what really works for them for me I have to my morning routine is so so important for me in order to get my day going and to in order to start my day with an intention so for example before I got on here I did my, I do a devotional in the morning. So I have like a morning devotional, evening devotional, to be honest, I don't mostly get to the evening. So sometimes I just do them both in the morning because that's just like my time. So it's just my me time to focus on on my mind and to get your your day right and to start that intention of like- And do, do you like a lot? Like, do you wake up like an extra 30 minutes early to like a lot time, 30 minutes or something like that? Oh yeah, 30 minutes minimum, um, realistically like, 45 minutes to an hour in order for me to I do my journaling I first things first I always make my bed clean up my space I, I think that a clean space always keeps me organized and structured I do my journal I um, do the devotional and then I'll open up my agenda I'm like a huge agenda girl I feel like such a literally nerd. that's what I was doing as you were when I got on this call and you were like what are you doing that's what I, I was like and mine has like the de not devotional but like it gives you like today's top three so almost like your little like journal of like what your big events were of the day your agenda and then it gives you like a gratitude portion so it's kind of like all that in like in a little agenda and that's the new I, i'm the same i'm with you with you on that that's amazing i love that <laughs> some people don't have an hour you know what i mean some people need to be at work at 6 a.m and they don't have a full hour which is totally understandable so something like that is great because you could do everything all in one, you know? But I think it's super important to at least wake up 
whether it's 15 minutes, 10 minutes, some, some time that you have in your morning just to get your mind right, um, praying or doing whatever works for that person. But I think that when my clients started implementing and seeing what really works for them and trying it out for themselves and seeing, wow, like my life has really changed because of it. And I can honestly say mine has. So, but I, but I was, sorry, I haven't always been like this. So it's just been a journey to get here. I don't want to seem like this is how it's always been. I've, I've grown to learn to do these things in my life and seen that the impact it made. And so that's why I, I kept them. But my life hasn't always been <laughs> like this. So organized and so structured. Yeah, and I was gonna say, let's talk about that a little bit because I do think, right? And, and life too has its waves, right? So there might be periods where we are more structured and we are more, more organized that we have the time that we can take to do these things because our life allows it to be. And then there might be other chapters where we're not able to, but I know there are some people out there, um, you know, that could look at meditation or journaling or even exercising, you know, and be like, you know, that's like, just either can't get into the mind space for it, or might just think that it's a load of poop. You know what I mean? And to be able to kind of get past that and give it a try and to just give your time space to adjust to that advice for that kind of person. I would say for that kind of person to just try it out, you have nothing to lose. I know that some girls, they come up to me and they say, exercising is not my thing. It really isn't, but I've been inspired by your page because I tried a simple, even though they couldn't, they told me I couldn't get through the full workout, but I did 10 minutes and I said, that is freaking amazing. Like I said, every journey is gonna be different. So 10 minutes for someone might be such an accomplishment, which it is. 10 minutes of moving your body, like that's great and then other people might go for the full hour so it really just depends where you're at in your journey and just my advice for them is to just take one step and that one step is really going to help you wherever you're at so if you're trying to become more fit and you don't know where to start just start wherever you can whether that's going on a five minute walk like move your body do something um and that can go also for your mindset too two minutes of just breathing or one minute of just relaxing or stretching. It's just, you can start with the baby steps and then see how that makes your body feel and then go from there. You can start adding time. You can start seeing how it feels to add it like daily. Maybe you start only twice a week and then you build up to four times a week and then you're like, wow, this is amazing. I need to do this every day. So yeah, I think that that's important. Yeah. yeah, for sure. And I think too, let's go uh, a little bit back to fit with E. So for you to come up with uh, the workouts and to come up with even the content, because in a way, like you're, I mean, you're a PT, but in this world of social media and of branding and of setting yourself apart, a lot of it has to do with what you post, what you put out there. What has that kind of been like for you, kind of navigating not only the, the health portion, but like trying to reach people and to do it in a cute way, in a fun way, in a creative way, and, and coming up with ways to engage people? Wow, social media has been, I I didn't know how big social media really is and, and how much time it takes, but wow. Uh, what I could say is that it's been definitely a roller coaster and I've learned to limit my time on there because like I said, it could either be amazing for you, but it could also be not so good for your mental health. So I think limiting your time, but also helping starting my brand i obviously needed to be on there because that's how i was able to reach my audience and so trying different things really just putting myself out there and seeing what worked and what didn't work was what helped me just put my feet in the water and be like where do i even start with this so i think doing a combination of like fitness videos and incorporating some food and then doing polls on my stories and seeing what people like what people don't like Constantly, I constantly are, am answering in my DMs and, and, and seeing, getting feedback from people. I think that's super important and, and actually taking that feedback into consideration and being like, well, how can I make my page better? And I think that also just to have, I try to have as much fun with it as possible. I think that a lot of us get so caught up in like, what should I post? What should I post? But as I've learned along the way is that at the end of the day, it's fun. It shouldn't be, it is a, a job in a way but 
I try to make it as fun as possible and I try to be as raw and real on there and I share my struggles but also things that are great happening in my life so just being as transparent and clear as possible with my audience I feel like that has built built like a connection with them and I feel like we really have grown over the past two years that's when I started my page for ventures I started it like two years ago and I feel like my confidence has grown before I felt so weird talking on my stories and now it's like normal and so so much has changed in the past two years with my content and the way that I post things and um and my mindset behind everything so and I feel like two years I'm like wow I feel like that was much longer than I remember I feel like I remember seeing this pop up for the first time because we have like mutual friends of friends and I remember coming across the page and I feel like it was way like earlier. I don't know why, like two years. I'm like, that's been a long time. Wow, like that, that deserves like a like, congrats. <laughs> um, I feel like too, we were talking about, we feature a lot of, I think, people on this podcast that kind of share that same thing, right? Like maybe not the traditional path of, of employment or of a hobby or of a side project or what their career is, but it's what brings them that joy. For you, what is kind of like the biggest question that you get asked by either uh, your clients, by people who follow you on Instagram? Like, what is the thing that they always want to know or the thing that they always want help with? I think a lot of people really love the live workouts and they ask like, can you do another live workout? Like, can we work out together? I think they just love like the community and, and, and being able to work out together and sweat and share that same passion. I go out and a lot of people are like, oh my gosh, please do another live workout. Like, we love it. So I think that that's something that they ask that people just really enjoy because it's 30 minutes and you just focus on yourself. You play the video and you just follow along. And I try to make it, like I said, as fun as possible for the girls. I blast music and I'm like trying to be as uplifting as possible to help them with whatever they're going through in their lives. But other than that, I think I get a lot of questions also on, on, just how to create that lifestyle for themselves. People are like, how do I start? How do I get started in creating this lifestyle for me? Like, I'm just confused. I don't know where to start. It just seems so overwhelming that there's so many things. And and how I started, like how I really just changed my life around is I sat with a pen and a paper and I was like, what am I not happy in my life right now? Like, what are the things that aren't bringing me joy? And what can I do to change that? And it was just a couple of things that I wrote down but just doing that really helped me. And since that day, I changed my life around for the better and I've grown since. That's awesome, yeah. And I feel like, again, it's it's that first step for a lot of people. It's just getting over that little, little hump of fear, that little hump of doubt, um, and to just kind of go through it full send. Um, for you to be, have, be able to have built this community of women, women supporting women, you know, obviously you're a woman, you started this and you've got this girl gang of people behind you that are either doing your workouts or following your lead. What has that kind of been like for you to, to kind of come to terms with that and be like, oh wow, like, this is what I've created. Amazing, like I just got chills because it is the best feeling. I think that we are stronger together as women. So having those girls behind me is so empowering. It's amazing. And also, uh, I'm getting scared. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's good. That's fine. <laughs> that just shows how much it means to you, you know? Because I think when you when you put your heart and soul into something like that, that's that's the reaction, right? Like you you really care about it. <laughs> I mean, that's awesome, Elise. That's awesome. No, that's awesome. <laughs> oh my god, I wish I wish our listeners could like see you because Really, I think that that, and it really goes for, it's not just you, because when I talk to everyone, that's why I encourage a lot of our listeners. I'm like, we have, we post these on YouTube too, you know, so that people can see, because when I see you guys, and it's what brings me joy being able to do this, see everyone else get so impassioned about whatever it is that they're doing, because for every woman, it's different. And some of the people we talk to on this podcast are just figuring that out, or they, they, you know, they're the top in their career, or whatever yeah. the case is. And they all feel that same way and i think that that's really it's amazing to see what you do and what all these other women do because it's really about just building each other up like that and the fact that like you are in the lead to do that it's just impressive it's impressive thank you i love so to piggyback off that 
I just love how so many women of different ages can come together for like a purpose and to just, I love instilling that confidence in them. So when they come in, I'm super in tune with how they're feeling in their bodies, but I want them to leave my gym or whether we're on a FaceTime call, feeling more empowered and more just confident in who they are and not only their bodies, but like I said, from within, like that's where it really starts and it stems off of that. So just reminding girls how strong they are and my motto is strong is sexy and strong is beautiful. And I just, <laughs> I, I think, love that. I love that. I love that. I love that. I love it too. And I just, I really do think that we're stronger together. So it's just like a different energy when I have, especially my group sessions and my girls come in and they just kill it together and the energy is just high. It brings me so much happiness to see that this is their hour that they come together to, to move their bodies, to, to get better, but also to hang out with each other. And for me to provide that for them is incredible. And I'm just so blessed. I really am. Elise, I'm so happy that you were able to do this with me this morning. I appreciate it. And for anybody uh, that wants to learn more about Elise and Fit Adventures with E, we are going to put those social links down below. But you can listen to the spotlight every Thursday. We'll be back next week with a new episode. Thank you, Elise. Amazing. Thank you so much for having me.